Yeah, the great thing about pickle is, is that the first time I played, I played a set and I lost to a grandmother. And, 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 and you know, it, it was great, but I was learning some ins and outs. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is the skill sets for the ins and outs, right. uh, you can catch up to them and, and, and get pretty damn good at them pretty quick if you're a skilled racketsman. This is Holding Court with Patrick McEnroe. All right, welcome to another edition of Holden Court, everyone. Patrick McEnroe here as we look at the clay court season and what's been happening over in Europe. Lots of men's tournaments to discuss, only one women's tournament, so we'll start with that one. My buddy Alan Van Ostrin, also known as the Van Man, my lifetime <laughs> tennis friend from Long Island. Now he's relocated. He went with the Floridians. He's down there in beautiful Jupiter, Florida with my other buddies like Jay Berger and Schmitty, and they're all down there. When am I going to come down there, Van Man, hit some tennis balls, hit some golf balls? Do we do we even discuss so, pickle? Pickle well, ball balls? Well, pickle's coming fast <laughs> and strong, and I don't think there's no denying it. So, you know, I loved Andre's quote at the end of that event when he said, uh, it's 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 where t- good tennis players go to die. I, I, I can't agree. I <laughs> that don't was think a good one, any- right. I don't think anybody's dying. They they might get injured, but the, but dying is not really the case, uh, you know. Because pickle pickle has its has is going to catch up with tennis with some of the problems um, eventually in regards to you know people only wanting to play with better players and 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 the line calling is 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 going to become an issue as as they get out of the, this maybe little bit of grace period where. Kumbaya! Everybody's so happy. <laughs> right. And, right. Everybody, we're just playing for fun. It's a social game. Exactly. Right. You know, no, there's no, there's no taking the competitor out of people that like tennis and will, will, uh, you know, migrate to pickle to say as the you, least. As, as we would say, the reality, or as you would call it, the reality, will start to take over. Is what you're saying. So let me give you, a, yeah. Let me let me give our listeners a little background, Van, because Van is a, one of my best longtime friends. We grew up playing tennis together in Long Island. He comes. Comes from a famous Long Island tennis family, the Van Ostrens, just like the McEnroes, you know, and, and Long Island Queens, etc. So, um, give me your take, Van, on what you saw this past week uh, with the women. I I was on here a week ago. I do this, you know, two podcasts a week. That's the role we're in right now. Tuesdays we try to do a little tennis update. So I did my first one this past week, and I said it's all it's going to be all about Iga Swiatek. Once you get on that red clay. I know the tournament in Stuttgart's indoors, so a little quicker than normal. But, man, she looked awfully good dominating the tournament and then beating Sabalenka, who's been red hot this year uh, in the championship match. What do you make of how Iga looked in that first big tournament on clay? Well, you know, Sabalenka with her victory down under and getting that first major, she is, she is someone to be reckoned with, to say the least. And, uh, and the fact that, that Swiatek was beating her to the punch – Literally, you know, I mean, catching it early, f- making her, making Sabalanka think that she had to do more than she actually needed right. to, which was very interesting. And then, and then, but what I really love about Sabalanka, I mean, I don't mean to go off the results of this past week, but is the fact that she's overcome that service yippity doo dah. She is unbelievable in, in in having that big picture perspective. So Iatek is 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 like a. A uh, hingus on steroids. She is. She uses the court <laughs> hingus so well. Hingus on steroids. I like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, she uses the court so well, and she's so smart with with her with her shot selection and her combinations. They really. Re- it, it, she really, really brings it to the to her opponent, so that you know, if her opponent cannot do anything about it, her consistency levels are so good that that there's no, there's no denying her. There's no stopping her. And uh, and I think that was pretty evident this past the, yesterday. I think it wasn't. Yeah. Well, uh, by, by the time we put this, well, we're talking Monday. This will come out on Tuesday as we do our wrap okay. up uh, on the podcast. world. But yes, it was on the weekend. It was Sunday. What impresses me, Van, more than anything about Iga Triantec is, like you said, her firepower off both wings, especially off the forehand. So more topspin than any female player I think I've ever seen on that wing. But her movement, you know, it's very Djokovic-like on clay, especially I'm thinking about that slide out to the two-hander. I know Kim Kleister's 
my fellow uh, worker now at the Hall of Fame, the Tennis Hall of Fame. By the way, I officially start my new uh, gig oh. with the Hall of Fame on May 1st, so I'm looking forward to that. Made my first Congratulations, trip. man. Thank you. I made my first trip up there a little over a week ago to meet with the staff. They got an unbelievable team up there, so I'm fired up for that. But as far as the sliding goes, of course, Kim Kleisters could do it on any surface. She did it on hard court, winning some, a couple of U.S. Opens as well. But Sviantec's ability to slide, especially, and get in position to hit the two-hander, to me, is what separates her from the rest of the pack, particularly on clay. Yeah, it's interesting. She, well, what she's got within her slides, which, which, which all the great ones do, is she's got either that she, – she has that two-handed punch – Little Djokovic, like like you said, where she just she can flatten it out, and then she's got a great slide on her forehand side where she gets over there, and then she just rolls it, and and the height uh, over the net and the depth or the angle on that forehand slide out wide is is really really impressive. I mean, it's it's men's like game more than more than women's like game. If you want to know the truth, the the, the variety of trajectory that she gets off both sides when she slides into the ball. And I think that that's one of many, many things that she possesses that makes her uh, extremely difficult for the, for the women to kind of uh, not only handle, but figure out. I mean, you right. know, the, you know, because, because, you know, this game, you know, the greatness of this game, how, how you're, you're constantly evaluating what's working, what's not working, and then taking it from there, moving forward and, and maintaining that clarity, which is what is so difficult. Um, but uh, I think that her style of game and, and the way that, like you said, she moves and then what she does when she gets to that ball, that, that Sabalenka is so surprised that it's coming back, whether it's a punch down the line on that two-hander like you were discussing or, or that roll on the out wide. I mean, it's just, it's just better. I mean, and that's yeah. why she's number one. That's why she's number one. She's got a solid lead, by the way, there as well. So I just pulled up the rankings. So before we shift over to the men, because we got a lot to talk about on the men's side, I want to go through mm. just quickly, Van, the, the rankings. I'm going to give you the top ten at the moment. Sriantec, Sabalenka. Then there's a pretty well. There's a big drop off from one to two, about two thousand points. Then there's about eleven hundred point drop off to the number three spot, which is Pagula, who's had an amazing yeah. you know last twelve months. I don't think she's a huge threat to go the distance that the French. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I want to hear who you think has the best chance to play with Iga once we get down to Roland Garros to the French Open. On Jabour, she won in Charleston. That's on the green clay, of course, mm. coming back from injuries for her. Caroline Garcia, be interested. I mean, she had an amazing second half of last year playing with the pressure. Once we get to Paris, we'll talk about that. Coco Goff is at number six. Okay, Rabakina yep. is at seven. Now, as I've mentioned multiple times on the podcast, if she had gotten the points from Wimbledon, she would likely be three. She'd actually be she a solid. She certainly has the fire. Yeah. She has She's the, got the, she the, fire has the closest power. firepower. Yeah, the question yep. is, does she have the movement and the consistency on clay? Kazakina, you know, good, good counter puncher. Sakari, who's down mm -hmm. to nine now. She's got the athleticism. Uh, and then True. Kvitova, then you've got Bencic, Krajcikova, you go down to the top 12. So when you look, what, what, just from me, my standpoint, when I look at the clay court season, Van, on the women's side, it's it's really all about Iga. I mean, we saw she was susceptible on hard court. Sabalenka can out hit her to some extent. Rabakina can and has a bigger serve than she does. But when you talk about clay, it's hard for me to see anybody in there unless – they just get red hot on the day, like you said, a Rabakina, maybe Sabalenka. Coco. Well, I think that's Coco. What they, well, that, yeah, Coco to me is has dropped off just a little bit. What do you make of where she's at? Because she got rolled pretty handily uh, over there on the on the first clay court tournament of the year. Yeah, no, it's 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 interesting on the women's side because the ups and downs when it comes to peak performances is, is it really varies day to day, and then and and and, the, and that's. That's no fault to them. It's really just the, the, how difficult it is to maintain that upper level consistency. And and, and again, we like we said three times already. It's a, it's credit to Swiatek. I mean, who's going to challenge her when she has that level of consistency that all the other people that you've mentioned are? You know, they don't quite have that day in and day out over the course of of your 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 major, which which is a which is an endurance test of, of many ways and shapes and form. Physi I think physical, that, physical, and maybe more importantly, mental on the women's side. 
Yes, yes, definitely. And the, and the French is grueling, as as uh, you know, as they they say that a lot of the players will say that it's the toughest one to 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 you know to to not to get a notch on because it's it, it is so physically grueling. Um, but so, you know, by I the like way, the was, Yeah, by the okay, but but just to because I was just looking up, I was trying to remember who Goff lost. It was Potapova. She lost it two okay. and three on the clay, and Potapova also beat her in the last hardcore tournament down in your neck of the woods in Miami. I know you mm-hmm. went down there a couple of times to check out that turn. By the way, what did you think of the tournament this year? Because I didn't make it down there. How was how was how was how were the outer courts? What was the vibe like at the Miami Open? Or my good buddy James Blake, of course, the tournament director down there. You're now down there, South Floridian. What did you what did you think yeah, of the tournament overall? Over the course of the since it's moved, I mean, I, I've I've had uh, tickets uh, for the whole thing a number of times over the course of the years since I've been down here, uh, and uh, the new facility is is actually this year was the best it's been in regards really? to okay. um, yeah the opportunity to. To, to really spread out, uh, the practice courts were really good. Um, I, the Butch Buckles court was good in regards that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I went with my wife and another few couples and we planted ourselves there and had a really good time. Um, <laughs> but we saw some really good matches. And, and, and so I think that the vibe was to enjoy yourself. And right. I think that that vibe... That's a Miami uh, vibe. Up, That's a Miami yeah, vibe, right, right. I, think it, I yeah. think it actually translates pretty well with down mm. here as well as, uh, you know, it wasn't only just for that crazy tennis enthusiast. It gotcha. was a, maybe a little bit more for, uh, you know, somebody who wants to be entertained. And, and I think that that's a good direction uh, for the for the overall health of the game, when it comes to attracting uh, new um, fans uh, that again may not play per se that much, but uh, appreciate the incredible athleticism that's happening out there on those hard courts. I mean, it's it's unbelievable the movement and the, and then the, and then we're, it's we're so lucky coming into this time of the year. I love this time of the year to watch the the the, the skill sets on the clay regarding movement because the game really has uh, evolved to um, I, I think a lot a lot of how well you defend honestly I mean right. firepower <clears throat> is ultimately very very important I mean uh, but but the defense of, of you know how well you move and, and then what you do when you get to it and not letting that ball get behind you because they're hitting it so hard the girls are hitting it hard. <laughs> Everybody's no, no, hitting it hard. Yeah. Yeah, no. Speaking it, of it, it, let, let's touch quickly though, because I want to get to a break and then I want to get into the men, which is going to be significant only yeah. because there were three tournaments last week. But uh, speaking of not hitting the ball hard, that's what I learned because you asked me earlier. I uh, evaded the subject just momentarily, but I'm going to get into it for a couple minutes here. The pickleball slam, okay, which I was down, which is down there in Florida, uh, in Hollywood. Believe it or not, the match was on ESPN, okay, and they promoted it. it. Was It was what's called the Time Bites. It was bought by the promoter of the Pickleball Slam, who is the same uh, gentleman and company that did the golf event with Tiger and Phil, and I think it was Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. I think he's done a couple of Correct. those. Correct. Right. So, so that the, was, so, so that that was, was a north of here, yep. Yep, so this, this was successful in that it was at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino down there in Hollywood. So I got in there the night before. Uh, they sold it out. I mean, it had to be, you know, the arena, their arena, uh, whatever you call it, auditorium, holds about four and a half to 5,000, I believe. And they pretty much sold all the seats. The only seats that were open were sort of the ones where you couldn't see the court sort of right behind it. So uh, very successful. And here's the amazing thing about it, Van. The rating, forget it. We'll talk about the actual ins and outs of pickleball, you know, because obviously hitting hard is not what do you do? You hit that little dink, right? The no, dink yeah, shot. The third so shot about dink. The dink. The third shot thing. dink, right. So you're an expert on this because you oh, see it no. every day. Uh, well, well, you're an expert on teaching. You've been teaching pickle. tennis your whole life, and now you're doing you got – if you're teaching tennis and you're down in Florida you or any place where tennis is prominent, you probably have to figure out how to teach pickle, right? Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna summarize it up real quick, Pat. Okay, and, 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 and I, I'm, I don't mean to, I don't mean to, to to sound like a slight on pickle, but you know it took me a hell of a long time to get become a good tennis player. I right. mean, it, it, the results. I mean, that's why I say to all of my students or anybody that wants to learn tennis and become an, a, a decent player. I mean, you better have perseverance and you better not be uh, only result orientated because they ain't coming. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I'm, re- I'm <laughs> right. really, really sorry to bother you. Right. I mean, to, 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 to let you know that simple fact. Um, uh, but so, so it took me a really long time to get pickle. I became a pretty good pa- platform tennis player, which is another which is big kind in of our, which is game. big in yeah, Long Island and Westchester yes. where I live. Yeah, yeah, in the Chicago, it's it's, mm-hmm. it's a good game. And 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 and, and again, that, that was the original place where uh, pe- tennis players go to die because right. JP. Jared Palmer, uh, you know, started playing and he dominated for the first three years that he played. And one of my former a, du- one of my former doubles partners who played on the yeah. tour, a great doubles player, and then he became a like the top uh, platform or paddle tennis player in the country, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. And tennis players really kind of took over, and and it's really interesting. Well, and and then now let's get to pickle. Uh, I think I was probably almost an exceptional pickle player the third time I played the second time I played. Wow. So, okay. so, I mean, you know, I mean, and it's just, it, and now, it's could just, you, you play know, with, could you play with the guys that are the pros? The answer? No, would be no, 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 yeah, right. no, but I'm talking about it as exceptional an average, as a, a recreational player, recreational, like, like way above re- recreational, actually. which is why, and, which is, which is why it's become so popular. Cause like you said, in tennis, if you pick it up, particularly later in life, it's extremely difficult to get just reasonably competent at that. You can actually have a good time playing. Whereas in pickle, you can kind of pick it up and get remote, you know, decently good. So you can actually play the game and enjoy, you know, it from a competitive standpoint as well. If you're, if you're playing against players that are similar level. Yeah. The great thing about pickle is, is that the first time I played, I played a set and I lost to a grandmother and, 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 you know, (laughs) It was great, but I was learning some ins and outs. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is the skill sets for the ins and outs, right. uh, you can catch up to them and, and, and get pretty damn good at them pretty quick if you're a skilled racketsman. Um, All right, so and, let, 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 me give you, let me give you where I was going just so quickly. Um, so Pickleball Slam was on a Sunday afternoon from 12 to 2. The Miami men's final started at 1 o'clock, which was on Tennis Channel. Of course, ESPN, we, me, I say we, because I'm, uh, of course, been with ESPN forever. We used to cover Indian Wells, Miami, but we were not this, uh, now in the last couple of years because they didn't re- ESPN didn't redo the deal with, with the ATP Tour. So now Tennis Channel does those exclusively. The men's final, which was Sinner and Medvedev, which wasn't a great match because Sinner was a little bit under the weather and woke up, and it was a straight sets, pretty routine win for Medvedev. Guess how many uh, people? Well, I'll just give you the number because you, you, you're not. A TV this is going to depress like, me. You know, okay. I'm a tennis lover. I know this you're is a tennis lover. So bum, am I. But this, this is going to bum me just, out, Pat. As, I can feel as it. You would say a little reality. 200. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I believe it was about approximately 250,000 people watched that the men's final. That was the average, you know, the quote unquote rate. Yes, exactly. The, the Rangers, New York Rangers, played the Capitals at the same time. I believe it was on TNT. Guess how many uh, viewers watch that one, Van? A, a, a million. No, 340,000, something like that. Okay. Pickleball. I'm glad. Look. Yeah, pickle. So a little more than the Miami Open, but, you know, it's NHL. It's on TNT, which is a little more. Are you going to hype John, Andre, and Changer right now because they got and great Agassi. ratings? So the <laughs> exactly. rating was for the Pickleball Slam. What do you think? I'm going to, I'm going to, obviously you're setting it up. I'm going to guess high and I'm going to, I'm going to say 625,000. You're close. Actually a little higher, about just under 700,000. So, yeah, no, that... so, but my point in, in telling this story is that I think it, it will, it will probably be likely that you'll see something like that come down the pike again. Of course, there's the, I guess there's two pickleball leagues. There's major league pickleball and then there's pro, I, I don't know the exact, exact name. We had one of the, uh, actually, two of the commentators for the league were on our broadcast with me and Chris Fowler, two two women. They were great. They know all mm-hmm. the ins and outs of pickleball. So there's sort of two different pro leagues. One's more of a team-oriented league, and the other one's more individual-oriented. Uh, but I think we're going to be seeing more of it. And, and everywhere I go, I was driving through New York City the other day, Van, as you and I used to do back in the Van used to help me train, by the way. It was actually my coach for a while. We used to train together. So we used to go, we, you know, train in the city before we'd go to Australia. Anyway, I'm driving through the city about a week ago. And right on the corner there, before you get to the uh, uh, Midtown Tunnel, there's a little park on 2nd Avenue. And, okay. normal, and they, you know, they've got the park with everything going on. And then they have a couple walls 
Now, normally people are playing. I know the park on 34th yeah, Street. It's 34th like Street. over the entrance to the e tunnel. Exactly. Okay, guess, yep. uh, guess what? They, you know, they normally play, the guys are out there playing handball all the time. Correct. Totally the... set up all pickleball. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. I, I'm, t I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's got really great attraction in regards to look, we've already touched on it. You know, you get immediate results. You, you can be proficient very quickly. Uh, I mean, at least where you feel like you can hang in there. Um, you right. know, whether you're going to win the match yeah. is where those, those, uh, you know, those little nuances start to really play and in, come into play. But, uh, but um, back to, you know, it would be really interesting because I think the pickle is covered by the tennis channel. And so they, yes. they have yep. actual data. So it, I would love to see that data in regards to, you know, the, the pickle events. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I right. catch myself watching them all the time I, yeah, because I'm the, trying to figure out how to play better. Right. And not that I'm ever going to become their level because these guys are ex doubles players that were two, 300 in the world. I went to one pickleball tournament. It was very interesting down right. in uh, Boca. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I wanted to go check it out, and uh, and you know, tennis players are eccentric and different, and 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 you know, I'm not going to say weird, but there's some weirdos <laughs> who hang out at tennis tournaments, right? And and like uh, us, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. well, they, they get they get a little enthusiastic, right. and they may be a little bit a little bit crazy, zealous about about the game and who, winning and whatever it happens to come across their radar at these competitive, fun, individualistic kind of tournaments. And uh, there was singles and doubles, and it was very, very packed and crowded. Um, but to, you know, there, there was a it it, it, it was definitely. Um, um, I, I'm trying to think of a positive way to say this. It was a lot of a lot of interesting cats. Different, a little different. <laughs> right. is what you're saying. Okay, I, get, you know, I think. I mean, I think it I actually get your made point. people yeah. made people at tennis tournaments look normal, and I was just like, "Oh, this is cool." <laughs> no, and so it's, it's so it, it is going to definitely be extremely popular. Uh, right. There's no stopping it, and and I'm a buyer now. I mean, I I I I, I never was anti, but I was always like, okay. Uh, you know, do we have to, uh, you know, and, and now I've played it this past winter a little bit and, and, and I really was happy with that event and how enthusiastic at the end of the match, you know, what winning does for people. And I was very happy to see Andre and Andy so excited about it. And, uh, and, and, you know, I think, I think, I think even, I didn't get a chance to ask you before this, if John was even a John little was bit pissed. intrigued, <clears throat> pissed that he lost it. Yeah, I, I, know, I know that. Uh, but, absolutely. But, I went to uh, see him. I went to see him a couple hours after and I let him cool down for a little bit. So I went over, he said, come he, on over. Yeah. Come on over. You know, I, we, let's have a beer. So I went over and I and I said to him, I said, you know, I said this because it, it got down to that last doubles, you know, like this, and they played yep. like the fast format because they were they, the, the time was actually going over, so they needed to play it, finish it quickly. So they had various, yeah, but they didn't mind that six hundred whatever thousand. No, they, they didn't mind that at all. They didn't mind that at all. Actually, <laughs> it was interesting it. when 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 the when it got down to crunch time, and I felt that most that all the guys did this to a certain extent, especially John and Andre. They kind of went to their tennis instinct, which is to go for it, like hit it hard, you know, like try to tr drive the ball when the other guys were at net instead of just playing the dink, you know, playing this, the, the soft shot. And I said that to John. I said, I feel like you, you, that's what you would do in tennis. Like when your pressure was on, you would go for it. Like I got to go for it. I got to hit it. And in, and in pickle, it seems like the way to go, you know, obviously watching the pros, you know, they're able to just play that dink like repeatedly until they get that one opportunity. Correct. It's it's all and it's it's very similar to tennis where you take advantage of opportunity and if the ball gets above the net and you can flick a quick flick volley, right? Everything stays out in front and you can and you got and you got good hands and and you you can get that that six inch to eight inch pop on little it. Little flick, like and, a little. It's like a flick yeah, up, a almost. little yeah. flick right. with direction. You yep. know, you can definitely do it, but that's not easy to do. You know, they, we know that it takes an incredible mind, and those all four of those guys' minds are. Are, are highly functioning when it comes to evaluating <laughs> yes. that kind of stuff. Competition personally, I mean, you were pretty damn good at it too, but personally, <clears throat> I, I was a winner, not a champion. I mean, <laughs> let's just clarify that. Yeah. I mean, I won a lot, but I, I never ever took it to any elevation like, like those guys. So, so their, their mind is actually geared to do that. And I think that they're, that's the direction of the game where, where there's going to be a lot more bang, bang, bang. Right. And, 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 and you can neutralize it to a point. It's a war of attrition. I mean, so that it comes down, it's, you know, it's patience, but, 
But, you know, if you can neutralize, just like in tennis, if you can neutralize, you can, you can wait for that opportunity. If they can't do anything, you can neutralize, neutralize, neutralize. That's why they go for the dink, 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 dink. Uh, and, and, but, but once you can get on top of that, the, the, the dinking is going to be minimal. Right. I All mean, right. Speaking, and I think the, <clears throat> speaking of dinking, no, speaking of dinking or drop shotting in tennis and elevating. Oh, yeah, the okay? man. Let's talk we're gonna, about We're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about the guy who is elevating to another level. And, of course, I'm oh. talking about Carlitos Carlos Alcaraz. Awesome who is, Alcaraz, man. Awesome. That boy is a, Absolutely boy is a dominant. special specimen, man. All right, well, coming back, we'll talk about that here on Holding Court. North Organic CBD is our sponsor here on Holding Court. I love their CBD gummies. They come in two delicious flavors, strawberry lemonade and green apple. I take both. Both are amazing. One a day and you are totally okay. I love to stay active. I still play tennis regularly. I love to hike. I love to go to the gym. That's why I use North Organics CBD. Their products are made in the USA. They're high quality, broad spectrum organic cbd products for everyday adventures and don't forget about the very popular cbd salve immediate relief of any physical pain i use it on my shoulder although i'm not serving quite as big as i used to but you know what i mean i use it daily for the shoulders as i said for the knees for the hips you name it it works wonders go to northorganicscbd.com and enter patrick 20 that's patrick 20 for 20% off your order. All right, welcome back. Patrick McEnroe here. My good buddy, Alan Van Ostrin, joining me here on Holding Court. We've spent the last 20-plus minutes or so talking a little women's tennis, talking some pickleball. Now it's time to get into the men. Let's start. Let's not start with Alcaraz, because we're going to save him for last, Van, but I still was very impressed by Holger Hruna, who won the tournament in Munich. Very slow clay court conditions there. He was on the ropes in that final match against Botek oh. van der Zenschulp down putting multiple... Putting it lightly. Ma- yeah, putting it lightly. <laughs> van der Zenschulp served for the match on three different occasions, but you could see him tightening up late in that third set when he had a chance to close it again. And once they got to the breaker, Van, in that final, I'm thinking... It's over. Runa's got this because Van der Zemsch was just all in the head. What do you make of Holger, another teenage sensation, not quite at the level yet of Alcaraz, of course, who is. But I love his moxie. I know he's rubbing a few other players the wrong way with some of his attitude and antics on the court. I think that will evolve over time. But when you talk about athleticism, firepower, and as you mentioned earlier, speed and being able to defend this guy looks like he's the real deal. Yeah, no, I have to agree with you 100%, Patrick, that uh, he is uh, tough. And, and, and that, is a, that is something that you, you, is tough to teach, if you want to know the truth. Right. And uh, he's got it instinctually embedded in his DNA that, that you know, there's a never-say-die uh, attitude, as well as, like you said, that that moxie being able to use it to his advantage. Right. And that's, you know, that's, that, that's a key ingredient. You know, I mean, uh, th- those guys that are actually uh, tougher and their belief system is unwavering, that makes them a little tougher. That makes them a little harder to beat when, mm-hmm. when push comes to shove. And we know that, the, the, that nothing's over until it's over. And that was a, incredible. I feel bad for Botic. He was, you know, he's, he was he, looking for his first title, which he's been in multiple finals. He's never won one. This was, I believe, Runa's, I think it's fourth title already. Yeah, no, and I didn't see the match points, um, but I did watch a, a fair amount of it, and uh, and 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 it happens. You know, I mean, you know, it, it's you have to be ready to win. Uh, and when you play a guy like Rune, Al- any of the champions, I mean, Rune is pr- proving to be a little bit of a champion. I mean, he's in his infant stages, but, but you know, I think that his future looks bright in regards to uh, taking titles and, 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 and challenging whoever is at the top. I mean, I, he's obviously doing that already. I mean, but, but that tough quality 
is 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 really really shows when when the crunch time happens and the momentum the only you know i didn't i didn't really appreciate him you know holding his arm he went to a few times he went to the right. arm and, <clears throat> and ankle and, he's and, holding you know, the ankle a little bit yeah, yeah no and, and and that's distracting the botic and if botic isn't tough enough he'll suffer me you know and thinking that he should be closing this out when he didn't do it the first time or second time and then the third and fourth and then by the time the tiebreaker rolls around. It's you know he's missing all the shots that he was making all day long, all tournament long. All right, and, before, and, before we move on to Munich and then Alcaraz, I was just going to ask you this: Do you think Runa is ready to make a deep run at the French, meaning semis are better? Um, I think it's possible. I think it depends on the draw. Um, I think that also there's guys that that fear factor that 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 that, that you kind of element that you need a little bit to to to, to to get to those places when you haven't been there before uh, isn't quite in place yet. You, you know that 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 I'm 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 winning points while we're walking out to the court situation, which <laughs> right, all the right. <laughs> all the great champions have. Just you know, but uh, I don't think that's in place. Uh, uh, you know, but this is this last tournament. What happened uh, uh, in Munich or wherever that tournament was is go- is definitely going to help with that swagger of him being confident and uh, him. Placing some fear into the in, into yeah. the minds of other. No, players. I agree. I think they still got one and so, more. Yeah, so, so to step. answer your question, yeah. I'm sorry. To answer your question, um, I'd say uh, it's ha- a semi of a major this year is happening. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get to um, the second men's event before we get uh, get to the biggest one, which is in Barcelona. This one was in Bosnia, in Banca Luka is the name of the city it was in. Of course, this was where Djokovic played. Um, and uh, I tell you, Dusan Lajevic, who's been a veteran, you know, very solid player for a long time. He's 32, great friends with Djokovic. He's Serbian as well. Um, takes him out, you know, in straight sets. It was uh, what you know that was impressive enough. And 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 we'll let's we'll talk about Novak too because obviously he sort of plays his way into into shape on the clay. It usually takes him, as he said, a little bit longer, a little bit of an issue with the elbow. So that's something that. We're going to have to keep an eye on pulled out of Madrid, as did Nadal. That's a whole other uh, story oh. about his health. But Lajovic beats Djokovic, second set breaker, 8-6, tight. And then, you know, impress, even more impressively to me, goes on to win the tournament. Beats Kitsmanovic in a very, very tight semifinal in, in almost three hours, 6-4 in the third. And then comes back to beat Rublev, who's been red hot on the clay, just coming off his first big Masters 1000 win in Monte Carlo. So a big title for Lajovic. Obviously, he's a solid, solid player, Van. Beautiful one-hand and backhand. I what, love it. Yeah, what do you make, <laughs> though, of where Novak is? And should there be any red alert signs for the Joker fans that are out there, maybe getting a little bit nervous about how he's looking going into the French? Well, number of matches always come into play when you want to win uh, uh, tournaments. You know, you can survive first, second rounds, but you know, third, fourth rounds, everybody's playing really good, and 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 and, and the luster is is the invincibility is fading. I mean, it's just a natural progression. I always say tennis is so Darwinistic; it's so evolutionary in regards that it is a survival of the fittest. And and but there's so many ingredients that go into this greatness. Novak absolutely commands them all probably as well as any player in the history of the game. Um, uh, but uh, I would say that um, it's, it's up to Novak. Novak's going to have to come uh, physically and, and mentally ready. Uh, you know, a career such as his has to start to weigh on him. His family's getting older. All these factors that, you know, that we don't ever really think about. We just look at the X's and O's. Uh, really play can can play uh, havoc on what he used to do and used to be able to do. I mean that that final against Medvedev at the Open I, after the second point, I was pretty sure that he was he was in trouble because he didn't look like he had the after the, the second the, point. You were sure? He yeah, was in trouble. The, yeah, no, because I saw him <laughs> miss a shot and he he didn't okay. have answers. Okay. He didn't have answers to his feelings. Okay, he didn't All have right. answers to his emotions. And if you don't have answers to what the feelings that are going to happen to you out there, you're in trouble. And <laughs> and you have to have okay. clear clear answers to them so that so that. Uh, you know, the, the doubts that creep into us 
to, to the mere mortals, the guys that are 10 to 90, 10 to 100 in the world. You know, if you're top 10 in the world, you're, 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 you know, your clarity and your answers to everything. You know, I used to say that if, if a plane crashed next to the stadium that Novak, Roger or, or Rafa were playing in, they wouldn't be phased because they would <laughs> they would just say that's what's supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Right. And that's the way they look at all their matches is that they're never, ever um, surprised by anything that happens out there. And if Novak starts to uh, lose command over because the control, I'm sure that he's, you know, uh, his personality is very um, controlling, at least on the court. And that's requirement uh, for this greatness. I think that he's going to he's he's going to suffer in those quarterfinal semifinal matches where where people like uh, that are going to start to stand up to him and that and that intangible greatness, uh, intimidating greatness is right. going to uh, not be as present. Um, but but I think he's got I think he's got gears that nobody else still has. So I would still pick him to win. Uh, some majors French. this year. <clears throat> well, what happened with the other? I, I, the French, French might be hard physically. Okay, but I, well, think, I, I think I think that's it, the I, question. Yeah, I, I mean, think on the, I think on the hard courts and the grass, <clears throat> I think that he would hold up a little bit uh, better in regards to maybe getting some 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 easier matches and not having to grind match after match because you, you, we know that he grinds. He grinds people right. down, and if they can't do anything about the way that he wants to grind you, he's going to beat you. Yeah, well, you know, it, 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 we're going to see come Roland Garros because that's really what, you know, obviously that's all he's thinking about. That's all that Nadal is thinking about, and he's a huge question mark. So now the question becomes for both those guys, will they be able to get some matches in, in Rome to get themselves at least a couple? I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is unknown territory for Nadal. I mean, last year he played a bunch of tournaments, didn't play great for him. That he normally does on clay, but at least he had the matches. Then he gets to Roland Garros, and then he starts, you know, to get rolling. Novak, I think, similar. So I think he's sort of taken the same tact at the moment that Rafa will take. And you're a hundred percent right about Novak. It, you know, there there will come a point in time where you're, you're more vulnerable, and we've seen that in the tournaments outside the majors. The question is, will it start to happen in the majors? Is this the year? That it starts to happen. That's the X fact. That's the that's the question we we're not going to be able to answer until we get to Paris. I think it's definitely going to happen to Rafa. I don't know if it's going to happen to Novak. Okay. All right. So let's get to now, Mister Alcaraz. Um, <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I watched the match with Sitsipas. Sitsipas actually got off to a pretty good start. Got a quick break. But Alcaraz, like you said, Van, about those all time greats, just completely unfazed by whatever happens out there. He's got this confidence without being cocky. He just got this belief system. And boy, does he have the arsenal to back it up when you talk about the game, the firepower, the movement, the defense, and also the ability to come forward and bring his opponent forward, which he does on clay more than any other player I think I've ever seen. On his terms. Right. See, the whole secret to ever bringing anybody forward, and you know this and 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 – Anybody who who really studies the game, bringing them forward on your terms is 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 complete offense. <laughs> you wouldn't think because it looks like they're on offense because they're coming to net. But it's, it's in in the case of somebody like Alcaraz, who has probably the greatest pinpoint passing shots of all time, and has every single uh, potential shot at his disposal. Even if he's, even if you're backing him up and he's on, got all his weight on his back foot and he's leaning back all the way, he's got a, he's got a flick lob that's going to just absolutely crush you when you're thinking that you're going to get a high volley. He's got, and then God forbid he's stepping into a ball. <laughs> I mean, you might oh, as man. well just, just absolutely, you know, say your prayers. I mean, I, I remember, I mean, I, I'm going to date myself a long time ago when, when I was out there with you and, helping some of our mutual friends. Um, Andre hitting the ball when he won the Australian Open in 2001. We went to 5,000 feet in Harare, Zimbabwe, right. for Davis Cup the week after he won. He beat Kafelnikov in the finals. Right. And Andre Agassi was hitting the ball as hard as Alcarez is now in regards to the, the time. Uh, I mean, right, timing and I, I, and I remember, both wings, yeah. Yeah, I remember being at the net and fearing for my life. Literally fearing <laughs> for my life. Like, he right. could hit me... 
And, and at will. He, at will. He could hit me with a ground stroke. No, I'm right. not talking about like and a ball that's running right. into the court. Right. I'm at the net, and, and it was, it, it was, it's terrifying. And Alcarez is a terrifying presence if you're his opponent. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, I, and, yeah, no, you're 100 percent right. And what I love about what he does, I mean, we talk, we talk about the drop shot, yes, but and, and I've I've seen this when we do this at our tennis academy, when we actually one of the themes we had a week ago was using all the court. So I was trying to explain to the kids, yeah, you know, drop shot, great, but actually, how about just using that part of the court, right? Like in from the service line inside that court because there's so much room there that doesn't yeah. get used and the first guy who i you know from my time i'm sure I'd go back in era people would say you know there are great aussies that did it but the first guy Correct. i remember doing it on clay actually wasn't a great clay court play it was becker becker yes. started to play that slice backhand short because that was a way for him to get out of the rallies and it was an effective shot. Then, you know, Roger obviously took it to another level on all services with his ability to hit the forehand, you know, inside the box with topspin. Then, obviously, you had Rafa, you know, on clay with his angle. But this guy, um, Alcaraz, I mean, yes, he hits great drop shots, but he actually doesn't even have to hit a great drop shot most of the time because you have to be aware and cognizant of his firepower so when he lines up the forehand after he's run you two or three times you have to be as you said Ben, on your heels and then he just plays it short and sometimes it's a dead drop shot winner but even a couple times against sits pass it wasn't even that great of a drop shot it landed like fairly close to the service line but it's a dead winner because he set it up and he's using that part of the court in a way that I, I got to be honest, I haven't seen anybody be able to use it that often and that well. Well, you've said it so clearly in regards to using the court. I think the game has evolved again to the point where where you have to be an all around tennis player. I mean, whether it's your volleying is or or it's your using of of the entire you know, what is it, uh, 39 by 36 singles and, and a little bit. You have to be able to use every inch of it if you want to penetrate defense, like we were talking about earlier. If you want to penetrate that defense, and I always say to my, my students uh, or, or anybody that's interested in learning about the game, is that the whole secret to, to, to hitting tennis is hitting the shot that they don't think you're going to hit. So if they think you're going to hit the ball deep, hit it short. If they think you're going to hit it short, hit it deep. And, and that's how you, you get them yipping up and back and, and not being, not reacting as quickly and clearly as they should to your shots or if they would, if they were in a rhythm. And that's what's happening. I mean, I saw so many outright drop shot winners this past weekend. Right. It was insane. No, it was, I mean, where they didn't get to them. And these guys are jet fast. I mean, these guys are really, really fast. And for them not to get to the ball is because the, the, their opponent is dropping them when they're thinking they're going to, they, they, they have to worry about healing up and, and, and worrying about power. And that's why you said it's not so much a perfect drop shot anymore, even though these guys are hitting in rune off his backhand side, right. hits a, hits a feathery deft. They're, they're all doing it. And, 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 and it's a, an incredibly um, simple concept that, uh, for me, um, has always been part of the game because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 60. Uh, you know, I played my best tennis with a Jack Kramer stud, Wilson. Oh, you know, I, so like, I, yeah. I like the feathery <clears throat> touch. I like the drops. I like the lobs. You, you know, got that little I, nice little slice. You get that slice. You hit the backhand that nasty slice. Chip. I mean, yeah. And I'm and I'm just so happy that the game has evolved now that I watch it that that you you have to be you have to first have command of all these skill sets and then you have to have the guile to know exactly when to use them. Alcarez is doing it perfectly within the style of play and the way that he likes to win points. And yeah. that's ultimately in the end what it comes down to. And uh, the boy is. The boy is a man. Yeah, he's a man's man. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's still a nineteen. Man about among to be twenty. Men. Yeah. All right. You, you you have absolutely nailed this. Okay, Van. We've already gone. Let me see. Over forty minutes. Normally, I'm like twenty five to thirty, but the Van man has been on fire today. But oh, no. before I let you go, <laughs> give me a prediction right now. 
Alcaraz versus Nadal. I don't, you know, say what whatever round you want to say, because Rafa's going to be seated low, which is a whole nother saga, which to me is a joke. But they're going to seat him what he's ranked, which is, you know, he's outside the top ten. So if I they would, play, yeah. if they play best of five. Roland Garros, Alcaraz. I'm going to start, start with Alcaraz Nadal. Then you know where I'm going next. Who you got? Yeah. Um, no disrespect to Rafa, greatest champion of all time on clay, um, but. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, uh, versus Alcarez, if Alcarez is he- healthy, and we certainly know Rafa's not going to be, I mean, as much as he would love to be, um, uh, in, in that scenario matchup, I would have to say uh, Alcarez. All right, Alcarez, Djokovic. Um, that's a, that, that's, that's a, that, that's that's a, a little different trickier. story because, okay. because, Al- because, because Djokovic solved Rafa's riddle. And uh, beat Rafa regularly on clay over the course of the last seven years. So I don't know about so regularly, that, but he beat, beat him a couple no, of times. No, yeah. he beat him more than Rafa, anybody else by right, far. Right, but Rafa still beat him more than he beat him on clay. But you I get know, your well, point. I mean, I, yeah. you know, I, I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, I've seen Djokovic have, like I said, uh, much more success than, than others. And so I, th- and I think Djokovic has an answer to that riddle. Again, if he's healthy, I think that that's a, that's a closer battle. Um, and, uh, and, and I, 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 to me, it's a toss up. If Joker is he- healthy, I think it's a toss up. Looking forward to it. <clears throat> and I'm looking forward to, um, getting out van on the tennis court with you and you'll be happy to know. I think I'm starting to get the golf bug. I played a, actually went out yesterday oh, wow. on my own. to the public course in Westchester played nine myself. Wow. Very, very shaky on the first tee. And then every drive. Oh, in the next eight holes, I just played nine. I met up with two guys who uh, I played a- along with straight as an arrow. Every well, that's try, good. which was good because normally I like I flub it or I hit the top of the ball. Uh, short game, a little shaky. Okay, so I need, I need, you know, the feel, even though I think I'm going to get that pretty good because I got decent feel, I'm, 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 I'm getting ready for it because the van man down there with my other buddy Schmitty down there in Florida, regular player, so. My wife looked at me. She said, you're playing what? golf? Yeah. I said, listen. I said, you know, it's not as easy to, for me to play tennis anymore. Run it. I said, so, you know, my buddies play. I said, I think this is the new thing I need to get into for these next, you know, 20, 25 years. Yeah, the only bad news I've got, Pat, is that golf <laughs> is the weirdest game ever. You can practice for two months regularly, right. go out and play around and be worse than you were two months ago. <laughs> I mean, well, I so think, it's, a, it's a little tricky. Yeah, um, I think, I, better, I think but... I'm just going to go out and play. Just go play, you know, forget about practice. Go go play nine holes. That's what I'm going to do. Well, the, the problem is there's a lot of betting, and, and, and the next thing you know, you care. And then when you care, oh, no. as you know in tennis, it, <laughs> things, can get, things can get tricky out there real quick. <laughs> the mind can start to play tricks. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, I want to thank my buddy Alan Van Nostren for joining me. Uh, great to have you. And uh, we got to do this again, my man. Tremendous hey, stuff. Well, Pat, thank you. And we can, we can talk a whole 20, 30 minutes on golf and versus tennis. <laughs> golf versus tennis. Which one's harder? Is right. a, it, would be, it, would be an, it would be an interesting one because that's up to big debate. Yeah, that, that, that will be a, a, a big time episode. By the way, my next episode coming out Thursday is with Dr. Jim Lair. And fascinating conversation with Jim on mental performance, mental health. Of course, he was at the forefront of this in tennis specifically when I when we were teenagers growing up. Yeah, so I remember. It, it, he's 80 now, and he's still wow. as sharp as can be. Um, I had him on my podcast a couple seasons ago, but he came back since I'm focusing a lot this season, particularly in the beginning of season four. Uh, on mental health and mental performance. So you will not want to miss that. That'll be Thursday. It has been Alan Van Ostren here today. And I thank you so much for joining me here on Holding Court. Thanks for having me, Pat. Holding Court is powered by Mudhouse Media.